Hey there, it's Caitlin. Um, sorry it took me so long to do this first video. Um, this is my third day here at the retreat. And, um, I, you know, I thought I would have a little more free time to video blog, but it's actually been surprisingly busy. It's been a lot of work. Um, I don't even know how to start. This place is amazing. It's This property is just so amazing. Um, as you can see, there's a river running behind me. And uh, I'm basically like in a jungle in a mountain. It's a really interesting environment. Um, so yeah, first, first day that I got here, I did um, Natim ceremony, which is ayahuasca. And uh, that one was a little bit rough because I was really exhausted from um, not sleeping well in the hostels and waking up really early to fly there and, and just the journey of getting there. So it was a little harder to get through that ceremony, but it was pretty beautiful. And uh, in the ceremonies, we, we uh, snort this like tobacco, concentrated tobacco rue. And we do it at the beginning of the ceremony and in the middle and then at the end we close the ceremony. And uh, we snort it and it, it, it's kind of funny actually because everybody starts coughing and barfing. Um, and it all of a sudden like, it's all loud and interesting. Um, so that's one of the plant teachers that we've been working with in ceremony with Natsum Ayahuasca um, itself. And so last night was our second ceremony and that was really the one that I, I got a lot of deep healing work done and it, it actually kind of shocked me because during the first ceremony that I, since I got here I, I thought why did I sign up to do this every single day for 18 days like I, I'm gonna I'm gonna die I'm gonna starve to death I'm gonna be exhausted I I have yet to get a good night's sleep because I'm just um, been staying up till the sun comes up basically every morning taking drinking all these plant medicines but um, Last night was really amazing, and I, I think it was probably one of the most powerful ceremonies or, or psychedelic experiences I've ever even had. And the interesting thing was the the medicine wasn't very so it, it it came on pretty strong like quickly within 30 minutes, and I thought, oh shit, like this is going to be a rough one. But actually, it wasn't. It was like it hit me, and then it mellowed out into this really lovely, beautiful space. And I basically got all of the good and none of the bad. It was it was the perfect ceremony. Um, I, I didn't have a real heavy body feeling. I didn't have any nausea. I didn't purge last night. Um, and I just felt, but I still got a lot of, of deep work done. And um, I'll tell you about some of the, the amazing things that I experienced. Um, I, I really wanted to like look deep into myself and sort of surrender and, and let things come up that felt necessary and I didn't really have any like set agenda or intention just to just to have ayahuasca show me what I needed to be shown and the first thing that really kicked things off was um, I started to think about um, a lot of the heartbreak and, and pain that have been caused to me by men and, and romantic relationships with men. And it brought me back to a, a breakup I had a few years ago where a person basically kind of, you know, said they were my soulmate one minute and then dumped me the next. And uh, I was devastated and um, kind of traumatized. And I thought that that was something that I had gotten over. And I think for the most part I had, but there was still a lot of unprocessed pain there that I was unaware of. And um, I, I was really like, an eruption of emotion sort of surfaced and, and purged out of me and I, I began to cry and really cry and I could just feel the pain 
move through me, but it felt so good. It wasn't like I was experiencing the pain. It was just like I felt the the energetic sort of intensity of it, and it was just I was just sobbing it out. And while I was there, I just kind of addressed all of the pain that any man has caused me. You know, all the times I've been used or taken advantage of, or physically or energetically raped, assaulted, and seen as a sexual object and um, I just let it all go and it felt like all of that was occupying this like part of my heart and, and making it sick and as soon as I cried and just released it I felt this like immense space open up in my heart and pretty rapidly um, I shifted gears into tears of joy and I just started crying and thinking about all the amazing people in my life that I wanted to fill this new open space in my heart with now that I had gotten rid of all the old dumb shit and I was holding my hands like this above my heart and I would take a deep breath in and I was sobbing this whole time. I would take a deep breath in and then when I would exhale my hands would go out a little bit and every with every breath I took and every um, movement of my hands my heart expanded more and more and every layer I was acknowledging a sort of subset of people or beings or entities that I was inviting love into my heart from and for and you know it was like my friends, you know, my, my Burning Man community, my family, my friends from high school, my animals, everyone in the ceremony with me, the people that I knew from other ceremonies, and, and then eventually I expanded it out to the, the whole earth and planet and universe, and I just felt divine love encapsulating me, and, and as I'm doing this, I'm breathing, and I could literally feel my hands just unconsciously expanding with every breath and really creating this huge energetic field erupting out of my heart and it was so powerful and uplifting and you know reflecting on my my love for my family brought up a lot of stuff and um, one of the things that really came up for me was um, Surprisingly, I, I realized that I was actually kind of hurt and um, unhappy with the fact that one of my um, relationships in my family was quite distant. And this person had recently sort of opened up and, and showed me affection that I hadn't felt in, in many years from her. And it really touched me. And I again I started to cry because I I didn't even realize that I was bothered by the fact that my relationship with this person was so superficial and um, resistant and that was really amazing and insightful and then I decided to um, think about my mom and I thought I'm gonna try to do some healing work I'm gonna play around with this and so I, I sort of envisioned her essence in my space and I was pulling out with my hands like this, I was pulling out the pain and toxicity and stagnancy and illness out of her and crying and, and, and I was basically channeling it through me and dissipating it back into the environment um, and rendering it ineffective and, and transmuting it into a positive productive sort of usefulness of that energy um, and that was really actually exhausting it, it was kind of like cardio exercise it was like I just kept breathing through it and I just kept pulling and sobbing and and taking in her pain and releasing it and trying so hard to relieve her of it and cleanse her of it and um, you know every once in a while I would do a, an inhale and to uh, sort of expulse the, the negativity so it wouldn't stick on me. I, I did a really good job of just making sure it was 
out. <coughs> and then while I was at it, I thought, well, it's only fair to do the same for my dad. And again, I'm just feeling this pain, these, these childhood traumas and this, um, these dark shadows that have maybe followed them for many years. And I felt like I was facilitating that release. And that was really beautiful and, um, and amazing. So then I, uh, I decided to focus again on my own healing process, and this time more so on the physical. And um, as some of you may know, I've been on this amazing healing journey to cure myself of uh, the autoimmune condition that I developed over my life. And um, I'm healthier than I've ever been, and I'm pretty, pretty close to being fully recovered, I think. But um, one of my biggest issues has been my microbiome was imbalanced. I have had an overgrowth of some organism that was causing an inflammatory uh, systemic reaction in my body. Um, that was really affecting me neurologically and, and psychiatrically. And I, uh, I tapped into my, my gut microbes, my organisms, and I just said, hey, I love you, and we can't survive without each other, and we're family. We are we are one of the same organism. We're we're part of the same being. This this magnificent ecosystem that is this body that we share. And um, if you want to thrive, I need to thrive. And the best way we can do that is if everybody is peaceful and in balance and not creating chemical warfare with each other or with my body and the only way for that to work is for us all to have compassion for each other and not be greedy in other words don't be greedy and grow in excess and then cause me to be sick because then the strip you know the distribution of the resources that I'm consuming are unevenly um, sort of given out and I it's like I had a heart-to-heart -heart talk with my gut micro so so interesting and um, I, I think they accepted I think they understood and accepted what I was trying to communicate because I came at it with true compassion and love and understanding and a desire to have everybody in my body live in a harmonious connection with each other so that we can all continue to live long prosperous bacteria lives so that was really Quite unique. Um, I also concentrated on actually fixing my tight junctions in my gut. I, I just really focused on having them lock in place and, and close so that I don't have leaky gut anymore. I don't have these holes in my intestinal barrier that cause my autoimmunity. And I, I could swear I could feel these little like dungeon doors like latching all through my body or through my, my gut at least, and uh, yeah, it was really powerful. Um, and then, uh, you know, there was a variety of other smaller sort of revelations and insights, but overall it was just an incredible ceremony and experience, and I, it, it was so easy. It was like, this, is, this seems too good to be true. It was like, no nausea, no heavy, no uncomfortableness, like it was just all healing, and um feeling really amazing and I'm this is just day three this is just the second ceremony and there's so much more deep work to do and I'm so excited to see how how far in I can go within myself and within that space of consciousness and love and yeah so I'll keep you guys updated I'm, I'm sorry if this is long but I, I try to make it at least interesting Tonight we are drinking um, tobacco brew. Uh, should be interesting. Um, probably will make us real sick. It's kind of the point of tobacco is it makes you purge. Uh, and it's it's also been really amazing. We've been making our own medicine. We've been scraping the uh, the ayahuasca vine and hammering it and pulling it into shreds and then taking the leaves with the uh, the DMT in it. Um, the leaves we use here are called yuki leaves, yuki. Uh, and you arrange them 
in a very specific way, you stack them uh, 10 leaves at a time and, and make like a mandala in the pot, basically, in this sacred sort of ge geometrical pattern. And then you add more vine on top and then you boil it and make the brew and, and condense it. So it's a pretty amazing to be able to make your own medicine and, and feel that connection with the plant that's offering you so much. Um, and then the, uh, one of the plants that we consumed in conjunction with the medicine last night is called uh, zamiki, zamiki, something like that. And it was, it was in this like water, it was like a tea, but it just tasted like water, it tasted fine. And it really enhanced the sort of psychoactive effects um, visually as well. And uh, I think made the whole ayahuasca medicine way more light and like manageable. I, I wonder if that's why my ceremony was so much easier physiologically speaking. So uh, yeah, I'll, I'll keep you guys updated and um, I hope this was interesting. Thank you so much for following me on my journey. Oh.